This video lecture will review the different types of division that you can do when you are programming. There are three different types of division answers that you can get when you are programming. You can get float or decimal, you can get an integer, or you can get modulo. Division types are handled differently in different programming languages. They all have these different types, but how you get them is a little bit different depending on the programming language that you are using. I'm just going to show you how to deal with them using Python 2.7. So let's talk about float or decimal division. Sometimes you need to change a fraction to a decimal, or you need the exact answer from a division problem. This would be the same answer you would get if you used a calculator. And you're going to use this type of division in many different types of problems when you are programming. In Python, in order to get a, a float or decimal division answer, at least one part of the division problem must be a float. So I can have the first number as a float, the second number, both numbers, I can use the float conversion to one of the numbers, but at least one must be a float in order to get a float. That's because we're going to use the same division symbol for integers as well. So Python is going to determine what type of integer you, what type of answer you want, depending on the, the types of numbers that you use to divide. Now you can use the float like this, and it will give you a float answer, but it's probably not the one you think. It's not going to give you 2.5 because it's going to do the middle part first, and this is integer division, and then change it to a float. So although the answer is a float, it is not the answer that you're looking for. So be careful and make sure that you're doing your conversions before you do the division. Integer division. Sometimes you need to know how many times a number can be divided evenly. The, you only need the integer part of a division problem. This is like taking your calculator answer and just chopping off the de decimal part. It's also like long division, like you learned when you were a little kid, taking only the integer part of your division problem. Both numbers in the, div in the division problem must be integers in Python 2.7 in order to get an integer answer. And you're going to see multiple answers even with different numbers here because that's how division works. Modulo division is a little bit different, and this is where the confusion can come in. Sometimes you need to know how much is left over. You only need the remainder, like the end part of a long division problem. This is particularly helpful in many situations. And my motto is always, if you're not sure how to do something in programming, try modulo division. It's usually going to be what you need. The remainder of any kind of division problem is a finite number. It's always something between 0 and 1 less than the divisor. This means if, my, if I'm dividing by 5, the only possibilities are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If I'm dividing by 3, the only possibilities are 0, 1, and 2. That's pretty handy because this really narrows down what you can do and, or maybe what your needs are. So here's some reasons why you might need modulo division. You want to determine if a number is a factor of another number. So if the modulo is 0, it's a factor, and if it's not 0, it's not a factor. You might want to generate only a few possibilities. Like I mentioned before, if, my, if I'm dividing by 5 using modulo division, I only have 5 possibilities. So I can get a random number or getting something from the user, and using modulus division, I can narrow anything down to just a few possibilities. I might want to toggle between just one or two choices. So maybe I have a counter and I have a game with two players. And I want to keep track of whose turn it is. So an even number would be player A, and an odd number could be player B. And I could get this just by incrementing my counter and using modulo division with two for two choices, or modulo division by three if I have three players. So, and I can also use it for making change. There's many other reasons why you might want to use modulo division. So keep an open mind, and when you're thinking, when you have a problem that's presented to you and you're not sure what to do, Remember modular division, it might be what you need. The, in Python, the modulo operator is the percent symbol. Numbers could be integer or decimal, but they really should be integer because if I have a decimal here, it's going to give me the remainder, but it's going to make it a decimal, which is kind of weird because remainders aren't really decimals. So you should keep your numbers all integers. Now I see kind of what's happening here. 
I can even divide a smaller number by a bigger number. I'm always going to have a remainder. Do you see a pattern emerging? If the divisor is 3, the only possibilities were 0, 1, and 2. I can't have 3 or anything higher, just 0, 1, and 2. Those are my only remainders when I'm dividing by 3. Try doing these problems on your own without a calculator. Just work on this set first. You can write this down in your notes. Ready to check your answers? Okay. Now try this set. It's very similar. You can do this without a calculator. Write them in your notes. And let's check your answers. If you have any questions, or if you're not sure why something is what it is, try it again or write it in your notes that there's something you're not clear about and I can make sure to go over it again with you. For one final part of the notes for today, make up your own problems. So come up with three problems of your own. Make one float, one integer, and one modulo. They can be with the same numbers or different numbers. Write down the problem and calculate the answers. And this concludes our video lecture on division review for today.